you were saying too. Um, always with us, God. You never leave us, God. I thank you, Lord, that you are our shepherd, and God, that you, uh, God, you, just like Delma was talking about Sunday, God, you hedge us in, and God, there's a hedge around us, and God, I just thank you, Lord, for for all that you do, all that you're doing, all that you're going to do, even tonight, God, and I, God, I pray, Lord, that um, you would uh, speak through me, God, I pray, Lord, tonight, Lord, that you would give me words to say that to encourage and lift lift up your body tonight, God. God, that they'd be words of love, and God, that it'd be given in love, and that it would be received in love. And, and God, I pray that you just bless it tonight. And God, it's your word. It's already blessed. I just thank you. God, I thank you, Lord, for your word tonight, and I thank you, Lord, that you're speaking to us. And I ask you to give us ears to hear what you're saying to your church tonight. In Jesus' name. All right, so I'm going to uh, we're not going to use scriptures on the screen tonight. Just uh, you can use your Bible, you can use your phone, your tablet, whatever you've got to look up scriptures. And it's the, they're going to be different versions from time to time. Right now, I'm going to read Psalm 23 from the New King James to start off with. I'll give you a second to find that. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all of the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One thing I have seen that I've thought about when I read this this last part of that last scripture, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I think of eternity, and I also and I think of, uh, you know, obviously we can't stay in church 24-7, 365 days of the year, but um, I think of the house of David as the lineage of, of, of David, you know, the house of the Lord, the lineage of the Lord. We're, as children of the Lord, we're in the house, part of the house of the Lord part of his lineage and I think what I'll go to next is I've got a couple other scriptures written down over here um, let's go to Proverbs 11 and 21 I don't remember what uh, version this is but I wrote it down. Be assured, an evil person will not go unpunished, but the offspring of the righteous will be delivered. So I'm thinking of, um, when I see offspring there, thinking in New Testament terms, the New Covenant way of thinking, when you see um, offspring, I'm thinking of born again. I'm thinking, you know, Jesus is the firstborn of many brethren. So... Be assured an evil person will not go unpunished, but the offspring of the righteous will be delivered. When I see that word righteous, I was thinking Jehovah Tiskanu. He is our righteousness. He, so the right, and then let's go to Proverbs 10 and 30. And it says, the righteous will never be removed, but the wicked will not dwell in the land. And what I, was, what I see there when it says in the land, I'm thinking kingdom of God. Jesus was preaching, you know, the kingdom of God is at hand. 
The righteous will never be removed, but the wicked will not dwell in the land. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Paul said in Galatians 5 and 19 through 21, I think we'll go there too. I just wrote down part of that passage, but I think I'll turn to it. <clears throat> you know, God's word, it is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our path. All right, so 19 through 21 in Galatians 5. Now the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, total irresponsibility, lack of self-control. Idolatry, this is out of the Amplified, by the way. Idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions that promote heresies, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, and, and others like things like these. I warn you beforehand, just as I previously did previously, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, um, I've heard someone say recently um, in regards to, uh, we, I was having a discussion with someone, you know, and I mentioned something that I didn't agree with that I didn't think people should be doing. And this person, you know, I, and I don't remember if I remember, I think I was talking about a certain, certain someone. I mean, not, not out of gossip, but it's actually, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but um, anyway, there's certain, I'll, I might even get into what it was that I don't agree with. I haven't decided if I'm going to share that yet or not. And I'm not, obviously I'm not going to name names, but um, so this person said, well, that makes them such a bad person. And, and sarcastically, they said this to me. So that makes them such a bad person. You know, and I'm thinking, it's not that it makes them a bad person. The Bible says all have sinned, all have fallen short of the glory of God. And it's not, you know, the people take, sometimes they take the word of God and they think that it's a, it's a condemning or that it's, it should cause you shame or guilt. And I believe with the word of God, just like I said, it's a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. It should show us in any way that we have erred. And it's just like any any parent, you know, you want your kids to make good choices. You know, there's there's a way that you can choose that's not so good, and it, it ends in destruction. And then there's a way that you can choose that, that points us and leads us to life. And so our Heavenly Father, he gives us the word of God, the, com the commandments, and the precepts and the testimonies, and the word, it's it's for our own good. It's for, it's not just do's and don'ts. It's not so we can't have fun, but it's for our good. It's it's wisdom, and I think it's in Proverbs eleven. Let's go there real fast. Yeah, the beginning of Proverbs eleven. We'll go there. I'm thinking of. Okay, so that's not the one I was thinking of. I'm sorry. But it is in Proverbs. Hey, that's Proverbs 4, I think. Let's go there. I'm sorry. I believe it's Proverbs 4. Yes. Hear, O children, the instruction of a father, and pay attention and be willing to learn so that you may gain understanding and intelligent discernment. For I, give, for I give you good doctrine. Do not turn away from my instruction. When I was a son with my father David, tender and the only son in the sight of my mother Bathsheba, he taught, taught me and said to me, let your heart hold fast my words, keep my commandments and live. So we keep the commandments of the Lord that we might live and, uh, and not suffer consequences and punishment and I don't believe either that 
that God's intention for us is to feel shame and con- condemnation and, uh, and guilt. I mean, there's a time when we have to realize, you know, what we have done is not right, and we have to turn from our wicked ways and repent. And, but his, he wants us to, he said that he come to give us life and to give us life more abundant. You know, he said in, in John 3, he said in John three seventeen that God sent his son not into the world to condemn the world, but that through him that we might have, that we might be saved, that we might have eternal life. His, his will for us is life. That's what he wants. He, and so, you know, it's, it's all about choices that we make. And, it's, and I, remember, I remember when I was uh, newly married, and I was probably still in my teens, 19 years old or somewhere around there. But I remember being at home one night. I think Sarah was at work. And I was listening. To, I probably was working out, but I was listening to music. And I remember listening to a song by Striper, and I don't know, some of you may or may not know who that is, but it's a Christian rock band from the 80s, and this was actually in the early 90s when I was listening, I've heard, of course I heard it in the 80s, but I mean I was listening, this was, this was probably 1992, yeah I don't think we got into 93 yet, but. So I was listening to this song, it's called Soldiers Under Command, and at th- this time I was not really serving God didn't really have a whole lot of interest in doing so, but uh, so I heard this song come on, and I'd heard it before, and I'd heard all their music before, but I heard this song come on, and it, it's called Soldiers Under Command, and it got me to thinking, I, just this song just got me to thinking, who's, and I probably listened to other songs in that album, you know how albums go, they usually have a theme or something, and they stick with, but I remember listening to this, and I was thinking, whose side am I on? And it got me to thinking, you know, and it wasn't long after that, you know, that I gave, that I rededicated my life to Christ. But, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, even tonight, whose side are we on? You know, the Lord is our shepherd. But in order for him to be our shepherd, we have to choose a side. He's not, you know, we have to decide, are we, are we, part of the kingdom of God, or are we not part of the kingdom of God? And Paul just said here, he explained thoroughly, and there's even other things that we had, didn't even touch on, he said, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so I'm thinking about, let's go to, to Psalm 119, and this is going to be in the New King James Version. And in verse 9, he says, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts. And I'm going to talk about that word precepts. And I might even read another scripture before I talk about that. I don't know. but And contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Let me look here. I think. Let's go to Romans 12. I'm reading out of the Amplified, and I'm going to read the first couple of verses. I don't know if I'll go any further than that or not. It's possible I might. But therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, rational, Yes, rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. 
And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by renewing your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. I want to talk about precepts, and I looked up the definition of precepts, and, you know, throughout the scripture, we, it talks about precepts. Precept in, in the, uh, in the dictionary, it is Merriam-Webster, if you go down to synonyms, then it has precept by itself, but it says precept commonly suggests something advisory and not obligatory, communicated typically through teaching. So it's a way of thinking. You know, Paul said, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it's not necessarily, this is not necessarily a commandment, a precept. But it's a, it's a way, it's God's way of thinking. You know, he said his ways are higher, his thoughts are higher. Precepts, to me, or maybe it's not necessarily a command, but it's, it's a way of thinking. It's a way of another, it's, you know, you get to know God and you, you know his ways. The more you know him, the more you know who he is and, and who you, you should be. Because we are to imitate our father. And, uh, and it's important, especially in this day and age, that we that we know who he is and that we can imitate him and that and that we can be a witness cuz this this world is uh is changing very quickly and, and it seems to be the way that if you look and, and see it's changing in a way that's very quickly it's very bad in accordance to uh what the word of god says and so we we're called to be lights and we're called to be salt that seasons the earth in order to do that, we have to know, we have to be close to God, we have to study his word, we have to be full of his spirit, and we have to allow ourselves to be led by him. And it's not all about necessarily, I mean, yes, it's good, to sh- we, knew, we have to share our testimony, we need to share our testimony with others, but just the way you live as an example in front, in front of unbelievers they it, they they watch they're watching they know they they know because I know there's people at work that know that I that I go to church they know that that I'm saved they know that I read my Bible and they're watching us I know they're watching us because I because every once in a while you hear somebody say something or they'll make a comment I know they're watching and so. You know, Jesus said, those that love me will keep my commandments. You know, back to being Jesus being our good shepherd, he said, those, this is my sheep will know my voice. One way that you can tell that Jesus is your shepherd, you're going to know his voice. You're going to know when he's speaking. And I believe today... More than ever, God is calling his church back back to the basics, back to the gospel, back to the cross, back to the Bible. You know, and again, I'm saying, you know, these commandments are, are they, we have, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't, obviously we don't earn our salvation by any means. But we still have choices to make. I mean, once you once you're saved, once you're born again, you still you still have choices to make, and and we're called to to uh, we're not. Paul even said he said we should not even um, we should abstain from the very appearance of evil, and it's for God's it's for God's glory. Because if you look at how the church has been the last twenty years or so, little by little, there's been more mixture. There's been more mixture until. A lot of, not all churches are not like this, but a lot of the church in general, they look more like the world 
and and I and I have noticed, and Sarah and I have talked. You know that sometimes you know people seem to have more um, more morals, more common sense, and treat each other nicer in the world than they do in the church. <clears throat> And it, I think it's because of all the mixture that has gone on and all the things that we have allowed and, and have tolerated. And, uh, and I believe it's important, if we're going to be lights that shine and salt the seasons of the earth, we have to be different. We can't be like the world. We can't, just like Paul said, we cannot conform to the patterns of this world, but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, and then we will know what that good and pleasing, acceptable, perfect will of God is. And it's getting harder and harder, you know, in this day and age, just because of uh, the way things are changing in, in culture. It's getting harder and harder to be a witness because of the, and a lot of it I think has to do with the way the church has been and the world looks down on the church because, you know, it's just like Jesus said in the in Revelations when he was talking to the churches, you know, there's talks about the power. Let me go there. I have that pulled up here. Revelation, and I don't remember if it's in two or three. Well, okay, I'm not seeing it jump up at me right now, but. And maybe it's not in there, but there's a verse that talks about lacking the power thereof, lacking what where's that found out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have the form of godliness but lack the power thereof. So that's in Second Timothy, Second Timothy three and five. All right. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. You know the gospel. Um, Paul said, "I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation." So when we don't talk about the gospel, when we deny the, 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 the gospel, when we don't speak of the blood, when we don't speak of the cross, when we don't speak of a change, transform life, when we get away from that, this is what this is talking about, having a form of godliness, having a form of it. We go, I mean, it's a church. You know, there's cross, crosses, you know, there's pictures of Jesus, you know, having a form of godliness but denying the power of thereof so in a sense i believe a lot of the church has become just that it's a form of godliness but it lacks the power thereof it's the, the lack of power to transform and to change people and to make disciples and to uh lead people on the the next straight and narrow path because jesus said you know this the road that leads to life is straight and narrow and few there be that find it and you know the more you look around it seems like the fewer it seems, you know, as you, as you look through your physical eyes, it seems like fewer and fewer all the time. But, uh, but you know, Jesus is coming back. And, you know, he's, Peter talked about it in the last days, you know, that there would be mockers and people saying, you know, well, well, you've talked about this, you know, for thousands of years. Where, where is Jesus? What, you know, people will mock that. People will mock the idea of Jesus returning and gathering his saints because it seems like 
like it's not going to happen to them. You know, they look around and they don't see it happening. But Peter said, you know, do not count this slackness as some count count slackness but the reason god is tearing the way the reason why he is delaying is because he doesn't want to see anyone perish he he wants he doesn't want to see anyone die and go to hell miss the rapture you know his that is not his plan that is not his purpose it never was from the beginning but he promises to be with us he promises, just like that song we listen to, to, he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He is always with us. You know, Domer talked about Psalm 91. You know, you go back and you read that scripture, and you, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Um, you know, I'm, and I'm thinking also when I was listening to that song, I also wrote this down. Um, you know, and... It's in Isaiah 54 and 17. I know this, but I'm just going to read it anyway. But no weapon formed against you shall, shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So it's not because of our righteousness, but it is because he clothes us and robes us in his righteousness. It's because of the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from our sin and makes us righteous. So it's not, it's not out of works, and it's not because of who we are, how good we are, or, but it's because of the blood of Jesus. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus that saves us, that makes us righteous, and we can't do it on our own. We don't have the power to, but once you become saved and once you have that victory, once you have the spirit of the Lord living inside of you, he gives you the power to overcome sin. And Paul even said that there is no temptation that has ever that has ever come, okay, I got that written down. I'm not going to get it wrong because it's important. Hmm. All right. Bear with me for just a second. It's 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So I believe in, and in Galatians, and I believe it's in Galatians 5, he talks about, after he talks about, how the things that you do will cause you to not enter the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit, and this is Galatians 5 and 22, but the fruit of the Spirit, the result of his presence within us is love. The very first thing he says, the very first fruit of the Spirit he says is love. Unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, you know, perfect love casts out fear, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law, and those who practice and those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the sinful nature together with his passions and appetites. You know, earlier he says, but I say in verse 16, walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek him and be responsive to his guidance. And then you will, you will certainly not carry out the desire of the sinful nature. He says, certainly you will not carry out the desire of the sinful nature. That tells me that if we're habitually walking in the Holy Spirit, seeking him, and being responsive to his, his guidance, then certainly we will not carry out the desires, the sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regard for God and his, there's that word, precepts. So God has a way. You know, his ways are higher, his thoughts are higher. There's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. So in order to, to know God and his ways, we have to know, we have to know him through his word. We have to know it by spending time in prayer, studying the word and you know, walking with God, you know, 
Eli, he walked, was it Eli? I believe it was Eli. En no, was it Enoch? Enoch walked with God. The Bible says Enoch walked with God and he was no more. You know, we're, we're called, he wants us to walk with him. He wants us to enjoy his presence. His presence is everywhere. It's all around us, but he wants us to enjoy his presence. He wants us to soak it up. He wants us to spend time just in his presence. And it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to speak, you know, a thousand words, you know, in prayer or, you know, but just spend time just soaking up his presence. Just be with him. Let him speak to you. And sometimes we have to shut our mouths and listen to what he has to say to us. You know, read his word. Let it just soak it up. Just marinate. Let it marinate in you. His ways, his precepts, his uh, his commandments. Because the Bible, Jesus said, if those who love me will keep my commandments, and they're not burdensome, but they're they're for our own good. You know, when you choose the way of wisdom. You, you reap what you sow. The Bible talks about that throughout the scripture. You reap what you're so, you sow. So when you choose, you know, from a standpoint of wisdom, the wisdom you get from the scripture, the wisdom you get from the Holy Spirit, when you choose right, when you choose according to the knowledge of the scripture, according to the spirit, you know, you will reap those things. You will reap the good from those things. But if you, just like Paul said, if, you, uh, if you're walking according to the sinful nature, according to the flesh, you're going to reap the things of the flesh. You know, the Bible says, out of the heart the mouth speaks. So you're going to see, you know, in circumstances, what you're full of is going to come out of you in, in, in those times, in those moments. And eternity is a long time. It's a very long time. And just like I said before, God does not, uh, does not want to see anyone perish. You know, and I was thinking about this, you know, we, we want Jesus to come back, you know, but we shouldn't look at it from a standpoint of, you know, rescue me. You know, Jesus is coming back for a bride who is spotless without blemish. He's coming back for a victorious bride. You know, we shouldn't we should not live in fear when we see all the chaos and all these things happening around us. We're, we're supposed to keep our eyes focused on him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And I believe that we can live in such a way if we keep our eyes focused on him. And when all hell's breaking loose around us, when everything is crashing down, if we just like just like it said, Jesus said, you know, and Delmer brought it up. When he talk, talked about building your house on the sand or building your house on the rock. So you build your house on the rock, and when the storms come, you don't have to be afraid. You know that your house is going to stand. The st and like he said, this doesn't say the storms aren't coming. The same storm that hit the wise man's house hit the foolish man's house. But, it's, but you don't have to be afraid. If you have Jesus Christ as your shepherd, if God is your shepherd, you don't have to be afraid when those storms come. And you have and you have your faith. And and the Bible says that each one of us was given a measure of faith. It's a gift from God. Even that does not come from our, ourselves. It's a gift from God. Noth nothing it's all from God. You know, we cannot claim righteousness on our own. We cannot even claim faith on our own. It's, it's a gift from God. And so so we choose the way of faith, we choose the way of righteousness, we choose God's ways, his precepts, his, his thoughts, his, you know, we, we allow ourselves to be transformed and renewed, and it gives us the strength, it gives us the power that we need to face the world when everything is a mess, when everything is crashing down around us, when, you know, when we don't know who's crossed our borders, when we, you know, we don't know what's around the corner, what's around the next day, what might happen right, you know, on our way home. We don't, but we don't have to fear those things. If God is your rock, you don't have to fear those things. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. And, and it's not, 
you know, when, when those things happen, when things seem to happen, you know, ways that we don't, we would not expect them to happen, do you still have faith? And you, and if you know Jesus, it is a gift from God. You still, you have to hold on to that faith. You have to hold tightly to that faith because there, you go through things. Sometimes it's, you go through a season of going through things and it seems and it can be if without Jesus, without faith, without the word, without his spirit, it would it can be impossible to make it through those things without him. But Jesus, but the Bible says with God, all things are possible. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It's all it all comes from him. Our strength comes from him, our joy, our peace, everything comes from him, our righteousness. And so we don't have to rely on our righteousness in order to be protected because it is not our righteousness it's the righteousness that comes from being washed and cleansed by his blood that he so freely gave to us because he didn't want not want to see any of us perish but he wanted us to be saved he wanted to give he came to give us life eternal life and a life life more abundant even on you know i don't i'm not saying that your life is going to be a, just a big old mess throughout your whole life I pray it's not, and I, I pray that you are blessed and highly favored, but there are, we go through seasons, we go through good seasons, we go through bad seasons, and it's part of life, but it is possible to, say, to stay under the, in the secret place of the Most High, and it's possible not to lose your faith when things are rough, when things are bad. It's possible, because with God, all things are possible. I mean, we, and I think Delmer said it Sunday, we live from a standpoint of victory. We, we're already there. He's already, he's already won the victory. It's not up to us to go out and win the victory. I like what he said about the, we're, we're just doing the mop up. That was a good word. And, uh, it's interesting. But, uh, I believe that. I believe that God is is with us, and he knows what's going on, and none of this stuff has taken him by surprise. None of this wickedness that's going on around us in our country, around the world, none of this has taken him by surprise. And I believe that if we just hold fast to him, that we, we will make it through. And I don't know when he's coming back because he never, he hasn't told us, and he said no man knows the, the hour. Only God knows when he's coming back, when he's going to make that call, when he's going to say enough is enough. But he is a merciful God. He is a gracious God. And right now, if there's, I don't know, I know there's some who are listening online. And I believe probably everyone that's here, as far as I know, we've all accepted Christ as our Savior. But there may be some out there that, that haven't, that may be listening right now. And, uh, and he's calling you. And, and the Bible says that this Holy Spirit calls you. And uh, he's calling you, calling you into the calling you into the kingdom, calling you into the kingdom of God, calling you. It, we become joint heirs with Christ. He said, in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. You must be born again. And you have to you have to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. And you have to confess that with your mouth. And and by the confession of your mouth, you he, you enter into the family of God. You enter into the kingdom of God, and that is just the beginning. It doesn't stop there, but you become a new creation. You become a joint heir with Christ. Old things pass away. All things become new. Your way of thinking changes. Your, your desires change. You, you take on, we, we put on Christ, his way of thinking, his way of, of doing things. And it is the power of the gospel that will change you and transform you and make you a new creature. The power of the gospel. You know, the, the message of the cross, the Bible says, is foolishness to those who are perishing, but unto us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It is the power of God unto salvation. And it is that power, that, it's the word of God, it's the, it's the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ that makes it all possible for us to enter into the kingdom of God. And for us to attain eternal life, because this is not the end. There, this the Bible says this this earth and the heavens will pass away, but not one jot, not one tittle of my word will ever pass away. 
And I, God, we praise you tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for salvation. And we thank you, Lord, that you are our good shepherd. And God, that you have good plans for your children. And God, I thank you for the victory that overcomes the world. The greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And I thank you, Lord, that you are, God, that you are, you are coming back one day. God, whether we, whether we are alive when you return and we go to meet you in the air, or whether we are one of those who are resurrected and then meet you in the air, we all will be given a glorified body, all those who have accepted you, all the believers. God, I thank you, Lord, that we have a hope, that we have a future, and that this is not the end. And I thank you, Lord, that you, you care about all the little things because you even said in your word, don't worry about what you'll eat, what you'll drink, what you'll wear, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added unto you. You even care about... God, what we wear, what we eat. God, you are concerned about our needs on this on this earth while we're here, and I know that you're taking care of us. And your word says if we're experiencing sickness or infirmity or disease, your word says that by his stripes we are healed. And, God, we stand on your word. We trust in your word to heal us, to deliver us, to save us, to set us free. God, and we thank you, Lord, God, that you have given us your word. God, that it is a road map. It's a road map to eternal life. It's a love letter from you, God, to us. It's, God, it's instructions from a father to his children. God, to, to choose life and not death. God, to choose eternal life and to, and to live with you forever, not to be separated from you, from you but to live with, with you forever for, throughout eternity. You, you know, 300 million years and we're just getting started. If you can even wrap your head around that that number, that's not that is nothing. It's just it's just uh, you know G, the Bible says that uh, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day to God. You know, we have no idea. It's really hard for us to understand because we have been uh, in this world where it's time everything happens by the second by the minute by the hour by the day by the week by the month by the year where he's so used to time but one of these days we're not going to have to pay attention to that like we have to pay attention to here because it's we're moving into eternity and it happens faster than you think the bible talks about us being um like the dust you know like like the like plants, like grass, it grows up, it withers, and then it blows away in the heat of the day. It's gone. It's, it just withers away. It happens so fast. You know, I was telling Sarah yesterday, um, you know, how in the world do we get to be 50 years old? I remember when, to me, when 50 years old was old. Uh, I used to think 50 was old. You know, how in the world did I get to be 50 years old? You know, and yeah, she said, yeah, our parents were younger than that when we got married. Yeah, they were in their 40s. I remember that. And, and and it's just crazy how time flies. You know, I've got our kids. I remember when they were babies, but none of them are babies anymore. We've got one left in high school, and he'll be out, you know, and was it 2027, I think? I don't know. But I know that God is faithful, and he knows, you know, if you, I, I encourage you to read Psalm 139. Because he knows everything about you. His thoughts to us, they're without number. He, he puts you together in your mother's womb, and he created you for, for a purpose, for a plan and a purpose. Everybody on the face of this earth was created. He, he spent his time. It was not frivolously, but he took time, skillfully wrought you, molded you, made you, formed you, even wrote down all your days in his book before there was one of them. And God, we just thank you tonight, God, that you care about every part of our lives. You care about every one of our days that you even wrote them down in your book. And God, I thank you again for your promise of eternal life. And I thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us and cleanses us from our sins and makes it all possible. And God, I pray that you just be with each and every one of us tonight as we go our separate ways. God, I pray that you would bless each and every one. I pray that you would bless the homes, bless the families. I pray that you would heal those that, that are sick those who might be suffering tonight. God, I pray that you'd heal Pastor Tim and Sister Debbie and bring a quick recovery to them, bring them back quickly to the church. And God, just, uh, God, I pray for financial blessings. God, 
especially for tithers. God, I pray that they'll get checks in the mail they weren't expecting, just blessings and overflow. God, rebuking the devourer for their sake and just uh, go with us and guide us, lead us and guide us and direct us. And I pray, God, as we open up your word this week, God, and from now on, God, that it would just jump off the page and leap into our hearts and stay there. And God, that it would, you would just bless it. God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.